myself Rohit Kumar Rudrapa Vagdarikar, working as an assistant professor in Computer Science and Engineering Department at Walchand Institute of Technology, Solapur. Today, we are going to discuss on buffer pool, get block scenario 1 in Unix operating system. At the end of this session or lecture, students will understand the concepts of get block scenario 1 and get block algorithm. Scenarios for the retrial of buffer. As we have seen in our previous video, how we are going to maintain the buffer pool and how we are going to maintain the buffer structure and free buffer also. All these things we have already seen in previous videos. So now here, today we are going to see when any process wants to access some data from the disk block at that time typically it will search into the buffer pool. So now while searching what are the different scenarios he need to face that we are going to discuss here. It means that process will send the request to the kernel, kernel will start for the accessing or retrieving the buffer from the free list or from the hash key. There will be the different scenarios. Basically this retrieval of buffer will have the five typical scenarios. So now we will start. The algorithm for reading and writing the disk block use the algorithm get block to allocate the buffer from the pool. There are typically <coughs> five scenarios the kernel may follow in get block to allocate the buffer for a disk block. Now first of all we will see the what are the different scenarios. Now the first scenario the block is found on its hash queue and its buffer is free. Basically the buffer have the two types of statuses. Two status buffer empty and buffer free. The buffer empty means there is no data block in the buffer. It means that particular data block is not available in the hash queue. That is nothing but the buffer is empty and that buffer empty will, will allocate to the free list. Now buffer free means what? The data block is present in the buffer but that buffer is not in use by any process that is generated by the buffer free. Second scenario, data block could not be found on the hash queue. So a buffer from the free list is allocated to that process by the kernel. Third scenario, data block could not found on the hash queue and when allocating a buffer from the free list, a buffer marked delayed write is allocated then the kernel must write the delayed write buffer to the disk and allocate to uh, allocate another buffer means in this third scenario <coughs> kernel will allocate the buffer from the free list now in this free list that particular buffer is delayed write now here what is mean by the delayed write delayed write means that particular buffer or data block has been modified by some process and that is still available in the buffer and that is not written back to the disk. That is nothing but the delayed write. If we will allocate that delayed write to the any process at that time that data is overwrite, overwritten. So that is the inconsistency of data. Now fourth scenario block could not be found on the hash queue. The free list of buffer is empty. <coughs> Last one block was found on the hash queue but its buffer is currently busy. So now these are the five different scenarios. Now the buffer on hash queue. Already we have explained this diagram in our previous video. In our previous video, it means how we are going to add this data block and that is what is hash queue headers, how we are going to allocate these different data blocks like 28, 4 and 64. I explain in a short 
here we are going to use the hash function that is block data block mod n now that data block is nothing but the any any one from this diagram let's take it as a 28 17 98 55 for anything as a data block and mod n is nothing but the size of our hash queue means if we'll have <coughs> the total size of header is 4 now i wants to access the data block 3 or i wants to add the data block 3 into the hash queue now what we'll do we'll use that function how 3 mod 4 the reminder will get the 3 so now we'll attach that data block 3 in the block number third we have so let's look at the <coughs> fourth queue in that way we have allocated or assigned all the data blocks to the block number 0 1 2 3 4 okay now we'll see the next things now <coughs> this is the diagram in this diagram we'll have the same thing as we have seen in the previous slide that is the diagram here what we have done we have added one free list header node in the hash queue headers the main aim of this free list header is it will create the link of free list free buffers in our system okay now here we'll take and as we have already explained in our previous slides each data block or node in this hash queue will have the two pointers forward pointer and backward pointer so now with the help of this all these free list headers are going to be maintained let's look at the headers now here the free list header will start to pointing to the third it means the third buffer is free then its next pointer is pointing to the five that five is free then four fourth one is also free then that fourth is next link is 28 is free after that 28 it's pointing to the 97 that is 97 is again free and then 97 is pointing to the 10 means 10 is also free and now lastly 10th next pointer forward pointer is pointing to the free list header it means in these links we'll have all this free list now here now we are searching for the block 4 now it means one process is instruct to the kernel or request to the kernel to the access for the data block 4 <coughs> so kernel what will do kernel will di directly going to search in the uh, disk block it will firstly search onto the hash cube now here it will find out here it will got the fourth so now here we need to remove that fourth block from the free list and assign it to the particular process now we'll see how we are going to manage this into the next diagram here the removing the block 4 from the free list means once this block 4 is assigned to any process at that time we need to remove it from our free list buffer now here what we'll do here we'll start from the again from the free list header free list header as we have seen the third is pointing to the fifth buffer data block sorry and then five data block next pointer is pointing to the 28 but if you look at the previous diagram that five is pointing to the data block four so now here we have removed that four and fifth forward pointer is pointing to the 28 and then 28 forward pointer is pointing to the 97 means if you look at the previous here fourth block fifth bl sorry fifth blocks forward pointer is pointing to the fourth and fourth forward pointer is pointing to the 28 so here we have removed that two pointers forward and backward pointers of the fourth data block and assigned it to the 28 let's see here five fifth forward pointer is pointing to the 28 and 28's forward pointer is pointing to the 97 and 97's forward pointer is pointing to the 10 and 10 is pointing to the free list so now in that way when process asking for the data block 4 or any data block in this way we'll remove the 
block from the free list and assign that list to the assign that things to the process now here we'll see the scenario of the algorithm scenario for the first that is the algorithm now here what we'll have here we have the get block algorithm so now here what we are going to find out is nothing but the buffer so while we need to start from like while buffer not found means we need to continue that iterate that buffer till we found the buffer now if block in a hash queue if that particular block is in the hash queue then we'll enter into the loop and if that buffer is not busy then what we'll do we'll make that buffer busy as per the scenario one and next is we remove that buffer from the list and we'll return that buffer so in this way this scenario one algorithm will work now think and write define the statement block is found on the hash queue and its buffer is busy think on pop think and write the answer is when process to searching for the particular block and if it is present on the hash queue but it is currently held by the some other process now in this situation process 2 is writing the uh, process 2 is in the waiting state so now in this way all these things will work reference and design of unis operating system by the jbatch thank you